With your latest news, I'm April Cummings. Chief Medical Officer Dr. John Lee reports 784 COVID-19 tests carried out since Friday's report. There were 24 positive test results in travelers and one in a person quarantining with a traveler. Health officials say the 24 persons included 11 family groups and three single-member households. 15 individuals were not vaccinated against COVID-19. Nine individuals were vaccinated. More than 100,000 COVID-19 vaccines have been given in all in the Cayman Islands. Of these, 73 percent have had at least one dose of a COVID vaccine. 70 percent have completed the two-dose course. An RCIPS auxiliary constable has been arrested on suspicion of allegedly perverting the course of justice. Police made the arrest Saturday in relation to what is described as an ongoing criminal investigation. The officer has been suspended from all police-related duty until further notice and is on police bail as the criminal investigation continues. Deputy Commissioner Kurt Walton says police take the conduct of officers seriously and are carrying out a full and thorough investigation. He adds they expect the matter to be dealt with, quote, swiftly and to the full extent of the law. Travel Command head Cassandra Morris says the dedicated team working to keep the island safe from transmission of COVID deserves our thanks. We will do everything in our power to protect our country, to protect our community, um, and to protect our families. And so what we're asking for everyone out there in the community to please do your part to also protect your country. Ms. Morris says quarantine breaches not only put us at risk for local transmission of COVID, but they can also cost you a pretty penny. If you are a quarantine traveler, it's really, you know, vital for us that you're staying within your premises. For persons that are in breach um, and are prosecuted, they can look for up to a fine of 10,000 CI dollars or two years imprisonment. We have currently um, 19 cases that the RCIPS is currently investigating. Um, We've seen an increase in the number of breaches over the last two weeks. And in August alone, we have nine cases that are under investigation right now. People quarantining at home should have no physical contact with anyone outside their home nor pass objects to people until they've been cleared. If you have any questions, call Travel Cayman. Audio there, courtesy of CIG-TV. Another milestone at John Gray High School on Wednesday, the Minister for Education, the Honorable Juliana O'Connor Conley, attended the formal handover of sectors 1, 5, and 6 of the new John Gray High School from McAlpine Limited to the Department of Education Services. Minister O'Connor Conley tells Radio Cayman she is proud of the undertaking and the positive impact it will have for generations of students to come. It is demonstrative of the Cayman Islands government's commitment to providing our children with necessary resources that will enable them to develop into productive members of our society. The handover followed the completion of the first project incorporated in phase three of the construction activities. DES Director Mark Ray described the event as a momentous occasion. Uh, We're looking forward to the utilization of these sectors as comprehensive teaching and learning spaces to the benefit of all John Gray High School students, regardless of their learning styles. The construction project was initiated in 2008 as part of the Cayman Islands government's efforts to provide a purpose-built institution that will enable teachers to effectively deliver their subject areas and provide students with the necessary learning resources. A little more money in the tank to help maintain roads in the sister islands. Radio Cayman's Dion Anglin reports. During Finance Committee, MPs approved a $500,000 injection into the Roads Fund, which will be used for the construction and repair of roads on Cayman Brac and Little Cayman. reason for this request is that the funds are practically depleted around the election period. So in, air, in order to keep the new responsibility in the men employed until December, we need to get this extra money to be able to do that and because there's road work still to be done. Minister responsible, the Honorable Juliana O'Connor Connolly, said a lot of this will deal with extensions to existing public roads. For example, one of them is the continuing um, the Major Donner Road, which goes up to the Lighthouse. 
So we'll do like a mile one year or a half mile one year. And so that's like one of them that we're going to be doing. The same thing in Little Cayman um, on the north side. And the south side, we do like a half mile or a mile. So the, these funds are to keep the road crew employed on these public roads. MPs approved the supplemental appropriation. Reporting for Radio Cayman News, I'm Dion Anglin. The second half of the hurricane season is forecast to have loads of wet weather. Radio Cayman's Carsley Fuller brings us more from the National Weather Service's monthly climate all-in-one bulletin. Every month, the National Weather Service sends out a report that breaks down some of the more interesting weather events over the last few months, as well as teeing up what's to come. According to the report, average temperatures ranged between 71 degrees and 91 degrees in July, with average temperatures at about 85. Looking ahead, the National Weather Service says September is forecast to have frequent wet days and wet spells, along with, quote, ample tropical cyclone activity. The September through November outlook calls for above 25 percent probability for normal rainfall and a 45 chance of higher than average temperatures. Now, looking specifically at precipitation, Cayman saw 16.9 inches of rain between May and July, which is within the climatological range. The September to November period usually sees 19 to 25 inches of rain, and the outlook is calling for about a 25 percent probability of above normal rainfall. Historically, over this period, there are between 30 and 46 wet days. The forecast shows about 32 to 50 over the next three months. Between four and seven wet spells usually occur between September and November, and the forecast for the upcoming three months is between zero and three extreme wet spells for the Cayman period. Looking at temperature, in between May and July, the average temperature was 84 degrees, which was higher than normal. The usual temperature range for September to November at Owen Roberts International Airport is about 82 degrees. The outlook calls for a 45 percent probability of above normal temperatures. Usually there are less than seven heat wave days over this three-month period, and the outlook calls for no more than five. Reporting for Radio Cayman News, I'm Carsley Fuller. The Cayman Islands Red Cross reintroduces its Darkness to Light Stewards of Children Child Sexual Abuse Prevention Training through an asynchronous virtual platform. Cayman Islands Red Cross Deputy Director Carolina Fejera. Darkness to Light Stewards of Children is a good holistic training and it is intended for laypersons as well as professionals um, as a sort of first step um, when it comes to better understanding child sexual abuse. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic um, and in an effort for us to address um, some issues related to capacity at the Red Cross, we have moved that training from a face-to-face -to, -face to a asynchronous training um, opportunity that is done directly via the d2l.org platform. Um, the training is still accessible free of cost to members of our community once they register with the Cayman Islands Red Cross directly. The training takes about two hours to complete and can be done in one sitting or at your own pace. A certificate will be issued immediately after completion. For more, contact deputy at redcross.org.ky. The fire be slowed down and also we could probably just... Wrap the fire. Okay, okay. The sounds of STEM in action at the Cayman International School's robotics lab, where the national team is busy preparing for global competition. They recently spent time programming the Cayman Cube Sat Arduino that will be launched into the skies attached to a weather balloon in the next two weeks. The device will measure air quality and beam images back to the team. Cayman's team is officially tied for fourth place across about 200 countries. <laughs> Contestants in the Miss Cayman Islands Universe pageant take to the streets Saturday for an island hop. They're promoting this weekend's pageant at the Westin. The motorcade included stops at Heroes Square in Georgetown, the Cayman Turtle Center in West Bay, and Heritage Park in East End. Committee Chair Derry Dakers Lee says this year's theme is Moonlight in Paradise. Please come out and support our nine beautiful contestants that are vying for the title of Miss Cayman Islands Universe. And it's going to be absolutely amazing. So please come out and support your, we have some, you know, young ladies representing us from East End to West Bay, Georgetown, and even a little bit of Kim and Brack. That is your latest local news from Radio Cayman's Newsroom. I'm April Cummings.